Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Billionaire's Franks and Beans. That's right. Do you really think when Warren Buffett or Bill Gates feels like Franks and Beans that their private chefs just open up a can of baked beans and slice some hot dogs into it? I don't think so. I mean, if they tried to pull that, they'd be shown the six foot thick iron door in whatever underground layer they were forced to work in. So with that in mind, I tried to re-envision this great American comfort food classic as something much more high-end and upscale, which usually for recipes like this ruins them. But here, that was certainly not the case. So let's go ahead and get started with the first major difference in our approach, vegetables. We're going to be working in lots of fresh veggies here, which will include some diced yellow onion, as well as green pepper. And no, no, not those common green bell pepper. We'll be going with poblano, which are much more posh. We're also going to do some diced celery. And for the first time in Food Wishes history, we're going to use some fresh cayenne. We can't be making billionaires franks and beans with powdered dried cayenne. So we're going to use the fresh stuff, which looks like this. So if you've always wondered what fresh cayenne looked like, but not quite enough to actually Google it, there you go. And then, of course, we will be needing some beans. And as I mentioned in the intro, we won't be using canned baked beans, but instead we're going to go with these cannellini beans, which are nothing more than Italian white kidney beans. So that's going to take care of most of the plant life in this, and it's on to the franks. So we're going to go ahead and slice up a pound of hot dogs, but not before we do this. And this is called scoring your wiener. And all that means is taking a sharp knife and making a very, very shallow cut, just barely through the casing all the way down the length, and we will do that four times for each dog, and that's gonna prevent the slices from curling up as they cook. You think a billionaire is gonna eat curled up hot dog slices? Of course not. And then we'll simply cut that into about quarter inch slices. And of course, because we're making this for the three comma club, I'm going with Kobe beef hot dogs, because while they taste pretty much the same, they are significantly more expensive. Well, I guess besides that, there is the fact that these probably have much less of a chance of containing things that don't come from a cow. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and slice those up. And at that point, we can head over to the stove to start cooking. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw a nice big chunk of butter in a soup pot, set over medium heat. And as soon as that butter melts, we'll go ahead and throw in our vegetables, along with our traditional giant pinch of salt. And what we wanna do is cook those vegetables until they get nice and soft and sweet. And we really don't wanna rush this step. And that's because we're really not gonna simmer our beans and franks that long. And we really don't want firm, undercooked vegetables in a dish like this. Those are not as comforting. So like I said, we're gonna take our time, we're gonna cook that on medium heat until your onions get translucent, and that mixture looks something like this. And at that point, we'll go ahead and add our scored and sliced Kobe hot dogs, and we'll stir those in, and then we'll just cook these for a couple minutes. Not too long, but I do wanna give them a couple minutes so the fat from the hot dogs kinda of mingles with the butter, and those hot dogs are gonna flavor the vegetables, and the vegetables are gonna flavor the hot dogs, in what can only be described as a classic win-win situation. And then once we have cooked those stirring for about two or three minutes, we can continue on adding the rest of our ingredients. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and throw in a tablespoon of brown sugar, and then we're also gonna want some tomato ketchup, as well as some mustard, and of course, Dijon. Billionaires are not big fans of yellow mustard. And then just to stay in shape, we'll do a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. And then last but not least, we're gonna pour in some chicken broth. And I did try to find some Kobe chicken to make the broth with, but I had no luck. Apparently they feed the chickens beer and give them massages. Close your eyes and picture that for a few seconds. So I ended up just going with an all natural organic chicken broth and we'll stir all that together. And then once our broth is in, we'll go ahead and add our beans. And in case you're wondering, I do like kind of an equal ratio. I don't want the amount of Franks above the beans. And I certainly, as anyone who's seen something about Mary could tell you, I certainly don't want the beans above the franc. So I will be using basically about equal parts franks and beans. And then from this point on, we will be using standard, we're making us do with Chef John technique. And you know what that means. We'll raise our heat and bring this up to a simmer, and then we'll back our heat down to low, and simmer this for about 30 minutes or so, or until it's ready, as judged by you. And what I suggest is to give it a stir every once in a while. And when you do, we're not just gonna give it a mix, but we'll also give some of the beans the old smasha smasha against the side of the pot. And what's gonna happen is the starch from those crushed beans is gonna actually thicken this as it cooks. And that's really what's gonna turn this into something quite hearty. So each time I would give it a stir, I would smash a few more beans. And of course, at any time during the cooking, you think it needs a little more liquid, give it another splash. That's you cooking. That's why written recipes don't really work. People follow them instead of observing and adjusting. But anyway, like I said, we'll simmer that for about 30 minutes or so. And as you can see from this shot right here, 
Because we scored our hot dogs first, they have not curled up, so not only does that keep it flat, it definitely provides a little more visual interest. Which, by the way, is billionaire's second favorite kind of interest. But anyway, I continued cooking mine on low until it was exactly how I wanted, and at this point we will move into final production. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off with a handful of green onions, which is going to brighten things up a little bit and provide a little bit of textural contrast, a little bit of sharpness. So we'll stir those in, and our franks and beans are pretty much done. Of course, we're going to taste for seasoning. Only crazy people serve things without tasting it. And we do want to be careful with the salt because those hot dogs are generally kind of salty. So mine was perfectly seasoned, which is why I went to grab a ladle and serve this up. And right here you can see the final thickness I went for. So I don't like mine too soupy. I like it kind of thick. And we will ladle that up into some hot bowls and maybe finish off with a little more green onion. And that billionaire's franks and beans is done and looking very fancy if I do say so. So let me go ahead and grab a spoon and dig in and forget the franks for a minute. This thing is like a world-class bean soup. I mean, really, if you think about it, we're only a pound of beef scraps away from this being vegetarian. So something to keep in mind if you swing that way, but I don't. And by the way, a little serving suggestion. To enjoy this properly, I think you should have a piece of buttered toast with it. For me, that really does put it over the top, but I was sans bread, but still incredibly, incredibly good. And even though we went with a high-end upscale approach, this was still the epitome of comforting, hearty home cooking. I mean, I don't care how much money you have. You come home after a bad day and eat a bowl of this, suddenly everything doesn't seem quite so bad. And sure, it would help if we all had a billion dollars in the bank. It would help a lot. But we don't. But what we do have is dishes like this. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.